And that's it. For Steve, I gotta fix my hair. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> we were outside doing a site visit all day. I know. So she even got the press here. That's when I'm gonna be taking pictures. I'm <laughs> kidding. We're just gonna hang tight for Steve real quick. Sometimes you gotta sprint. Just... <laughs> we thought maybe the bridge caught you up and you were gonna be late. No. Oh, he went downstairs to get paper. Yeah. Hurry up, we're waiting for you. Run. All right, it's 402, and I will call the City Plan Commission meeting to order. If you're able, can you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Is there a motion to approve our minutes from the last meeting? So moved. Second. Motion second. All those in favor? Aye. Any objection? Chair votes aye. Minutes are approved. All right, item number six, application for conditional use with sign permit with exceptions by Mar Marshall Sign to install new signage for George Warner Schools located at 830 Virginia Avenue. Steve. All right, Katie Schultz is here from Marshall Sign representing George Warner Schools. And what we're taking a look is at, at 830 Virginia Avenue. There's several schools that are already located at this Central High School, Etude School, and now George Warner is looking to have their school there. And what they would like to do is have a, a sign that would allow for people to easily identify where their school is in the um, facility. So basically they're looking at, um, you can see in the, the uh, information before you, there's a large W logo and then individual letters. It's about 41 square feet. And so um, in the urban residential zone, the maximum size for a uh, sign is 24 square feet and this is 41 square feet. The building's pretty big, a 24 square foot sign would be pretty small. And so in order to uh, provide the identification and the advertising that they need for the entrance, they asked for this um, request. So staff is recommending approval. Out of breath. <laughs> is there a motion? Move to approve. I'll second. Motion second. Any comments, questions, thoughts? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any objection? Chair votes aye. That is approved. Thank you. Next, item seven, application for conditional use with sign permit with exceptions by Sign Me Up of Wisconsin LLC to install new signage for Third Coast Vascular located at 1441 North Taylor. Steve? All right, Brian Dutton is here from Sign Me Up and we're taking a look at 1441 North Taylor Drive, which used to be the old BMO Harris facility. Um, a while back, I think it was, let's see, about, I believe it was about 2018. Yeah, May of 2018, owners came in and um, to the plan commission to do a conditional use permit to uh, change the building from a one tenant facility into a multi-tenant facility. So this is one of the new users that's coming in. Third, Third Coast Vascular is a one-of-a-kind hybrid surgery center that will provide access to superior medical care to their patient population along with easing the burden of outpatient procedures at the hospitals in the Sheboygan area. The surgery center is located in the BMO Harris Bank building. The second floor of this building previously occupied by the bank was converted into a state of an art ambulatory surgery center with two surgical su suites, six consultation rooms and five patient recovery bays. Um, the building has been occupied by Bino Harris for a sub substantial amount of time. And with regards to being able to advertise their new business, they wanted to have the opportunity to also include some wall signage. So basically they're taking a look at two wall signs, one on the north and the south sides of the building, interior, uh, individual letter, interior lit, 
um, signs. They're both about uh, 50 square feet and advertise Third Coast Vascular. In addition, they're looking at refacing the two existing monument signs. And so right now they're currently just all BMO Harris and now they'll say BMO Harris and Third Coast Vascular. And then they're looking at adding a directional sign it by their um, uh, northeast corner of the property by the driveway so that people know where to uh, come into the facility. Um, so the applicant is requesting a variance to have four wall signs, maximum is two. Um, one uh, other item that the uh, staff would be recommending is that, could you go to the very end to the generators? Um, when, when the um, plan commission approved the original conditional use permit in 18, we didn't know who the tenants would be and things of that nature. Third Coast moved in and I'm assuming that this Kohler generator, there's the one that looks like it's more mobile, but the other one on the bottom looks to be more of a permanent structure. And at that time we required all the ground mechanicals to be uh, screened. And so this is right off of Superior Avenue. So one of the conditions of approval that I'm putting on here is that prior to building permit issuance, that the owners work with staff to inform us how that unit's going to be screened. So once that takes place, then we would work with uh, sign me up to get those permits issued. So staff was recommending approval subject to conditions you have before you. Does the applicant have any additional comments? Okay. Questions from commission members? Jerry? Thank you, Mayor. Steve, on the uh, monument signs, are there any other tenants that are going to be added to the building? Because there wouldn't be room on those two signs currently. Right, and, and so from, uh, and, and maybe Brian, you might be able to help me out on that a little bit, but um, I would assume that there is more space in that building. Um, I think there was basement space mm -hmm. as well that they were looking at. And so it, based on what we have here, it does not appear that those businesses would be located on this monument sign, or on this, uh, yeah, on this monument sign. So could that be something down the road that we see another reface? Possibly. Okay. But not at this time. Okay. Thank you. Uh, with that, I make a motion to approve subject to the staff recommendations. Second. Motion second. Other comments? Can I make one comment? Yes. Yeah, um, any thoughts to that, Brian? Does it make sense to talk to those guys at all, to talk about any other tenants that they might want to get on those monument signs or? Okay. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any objection? Chair votes aye. That's approved. Thank you. Aye. Great. Next application for conditional use with exceptions by Boston Inc. to operate Ashley Home Store at 2625 South Business, which is the former pick and save. Steve? Yeah, thanks, Mayor. Um, Scott Winterfield is here. Sam. Sam I'm sorry, Sam Winterfield. Uh, is here representing Ashley Furniture and Sam's with Keller Incorporated. Um, so what we're taking a look at is the, the, pick and, the old former pick and save building on 2625 South Business Drive. It's been vacant since about July of uh, 2017 and uh, Ashley Home Store is looking to utilize the whole facility for uh, their furniture uh, uh, stores that they operate. Um, the site was selected due to the adjacency to heavy commercial areas and residential areas and Ashley provides uh, retail customer experience that thrives in transition areas from heavy commercial into residential areas. Uh, the building and site layout are existing with no proposed changes to ingress, egress, parking layout, site lighting, landscaping. Minimal facade alterations are being proposed to the front side of the building near the existing main entrance. So what they're doing is just kind of uh, changing the uh, gabled kind of entrance roof to this more uh, flat uh, that you see in the, the pictures before you, the perspectives before you. Um, you can also see uh, to the right of the main entrance, there's some signage that says mattress and furniture, and there's just a little bit of gray EFIS work that's planned to do, uh, be done in those areas. So really not much done other than getting this more to an appearance of more with uh, the likings of Ashley Furniture. Um, 
hours of operation would be Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m., Saturday, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m., and Sunday, 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Location would have approximately 16 to 20 employees. Uh, the project, uh, proposed project has a fairly aggressive construction timeline. Interior demolition is set to begin in July with the owner occupying in early November. Um, as you can see from the pictures that you have before you, there are a number of signs that are being proposed. One is uh, the Ashley at the main entrance, Ashley outlet on the north side of the west elevation, style by design on the south side of the west elevation, mattress on the north of the main entrance, and furniture on the uh, south side of the main entrance. Interior alterations would uh, occur to approximately 40% of the building. Um, Ashley employs more than 17,000 valued team members across the country and boasts more than 30 million square feet globally in manufacturing and distribu distribution space. Product categories include bedroom, dining room, upholstery, leather, occasional tables, home office, youth bedrooms, recliners, mattresses, and accessories. So the applicant is requesting uh, one exception to have the five wall signs that you see before you. Um, they show some conceptual signage, which we see here, but they would have to have a more formal submittal for the actual sign permits. There is a pylon sign that is at the uh, South Business Drive at the very uh, front of that area. And all we'd be looking for is over the years since Pick and Save has been out of the, uh, since the facility has been vacant, We've allowed this this pylon sign to be built as part of that because there are there is some uh, multi uh, multi tenant facility right to the south of pick and save and instead of everyone having their own signage the idea was to allow for this pylon and these tenants to be on there and our hope would just be that down the line whether it's Ashley or the owner would have just a little bit more uniformity as those would change. There's a little bit different sizes, different things like that. So we're just looking at those, uh, Ashley, to keep an eye on that. Staff did receive a couple of messages from residential neighbors to the east. Um, neighbor Ruth Suprick at 1922 Humboldt. These are uh, both the neighbors that I'm gonna be speaking to are on the east side of the site and Humboldt dead ends into um, the uh, Ashley site. Um, she stated that she was hoping that the store would not be permitted access to Humboldt Avenue and that the barricades would remain and staff did inform Ms. Suprick that there would be no access to Humboldt Avenue and the landscape and the barricades would remain in that area. Um, another email that was received from Joseph Gulig, uh, he uh, is a neighbor that shares a common property line on that east side of the uh, property. Um, he indicates that I'm unable to t attend the plan commission meeting on July 12th, 2022, but would like to have my concerns and comments be presented at the meeting and shared with Boston Inc. My home and yard are about the store property to the east, so I am most directly impacted by the operation. My wife and I have lived in this house for 46 years and raised a family here. There's been a big box store as our neighbor for some time. The most recent owner, Roundies Inc., was for the most part a good neighbor. However, there were still issues with the management of the property, especially since the store was closed, and I want to ensure that the new operator is aware of them and the plan commission addresses them. Uh, the first one is that the new op operator must be required to maintain the system to prevent the gulls and or birds from roosting and nesting on the roof of the building. During the last several years, thousands of gulls used the building to raise their young, and this resulted in constant shrieking, gull waste, covering our cars, roof, outdoor deck, and backyard and it went unchecked for a little while. He did have some complaints to the former mayor of Andersteen and uh, the building manager hired a company to manage the problem. And after obtaining fish and wildlife service permit to manage the gulls, a federally protected bird, the nests were removed in seasons three and four. The large flock, while not uh, successfully nesting, still spent summer atop of the building over four years. And this year, season five, the gulls did not return. I asked that the gull management plan be made a condition on which the permit is granted. Staff, uh, I don't know if that is a condition that we would necessarily recommend to the plan commission, but certainly I would encourage the applicant obviously to be aware of this. And if this uh, would continue to be a nuisance, we would just handle it through our nuisance ordinance. Um, 
Mr. Gulag also mentions that there are several trees that were planted to act as sound visual barriers that have since died, and I ask that the trees be removed and that new trees of equal or larger size be planted in. I think that's at the very end. And he um, he is correct on that. There are a couple of trees. When, when we approved the pick and save, you can see that there was quite a bit of landscaping that was put on the east property line to help um, buffer the development. So this would definitely, this is a condition of approval is to replace those uh, uh, dead trees. Um, he's asking that the window coverings, I think there's a picture that might show this. Um, I asked that the window coverings be installed on the second floor to block ambient indoor light. Um, staff's not recommending that as a condition, but is encouraging the applicant. The applicant may have some things to say in terms of uh, just the night lighting that's associated with their operations. Um, he asked that no deliver delivery trucks be allowed to run overnight while on the property, especially any parked at the rear sides of the building. I did not include that because I received this email after my staff report was completed but staff wouldn't have any issues with a condition being added that no vehicles are allowed to run overnight. And I don't believe the applicant had concerns with a condition like that. Um, mentioned that he asked that the wooden fence bordering the properties along South 20th Street and Humboldt be inspected and repair where needed. Again, I think that's something we could have the applicant take a look at. I ask that the trash dumpsters or other containers not be removed before 7 a.m. because of noise created. I don't know that we can necessarily condition the timing, but we can obviously have the applicant work with their trash uh, uh, people to be aware of this concern and, and hopefully address that at a time that's more appropriate. And then the last one is he asked that the snow be removed from the parking area, not be piled at the rear of the building in order to prevent water runoff. So I'm sure that's something else um, that could be done uh, and encouraged by the applicant to make sure that they're um, not doing that. Plant Commission could have the applicant explain, um, you know, the types of services and products Ashley and Ashley Outlet provide. If there's any rooftop mechanicals, I don't believe that there was going to be anything. Um, if there is to be any types of, of dumpster enclosure where that is and how the design is there. Um, I don't believe there are any site improvements and we could just ju uh, verify that and that, that we're just making the applicant aware of the seagulls as the neighbor had mentioned as well. So staff was recommending approval of the uh, proposal with the conditions you have before you. And again, like I said, the items with regards to the trucks running overnight um, and uh, that one staff did not address, but if the plan commission wants to add that, that's certainly something they could do. So I can answer any questions in the applicants here. Does the applicant have any thoughts, comments that you'd like to add? Yeah, yeah sure. Um, I can follow through with the bullet points that were just presented. Um, you know, the first and foremost, uh, the Siegel issue, um, certainly something the owner doesn't want as part of their business. Um, so the conversation yesterday was with Pick and Save or Roundies to get their nuisance plan so that we have it, so that we're ready to implement it if it becomes an issue again. And, and, and I so just want to... I think that's a win for everybody. And I think, too, just my, my comments on that point, too, I think it became an issue because it was a vacant building. Right. So once... Right. <coughs> Excuse me. I've been talking too much today. <coughs> I'm losing my voice. So I think, and I hope, that once there's an occupant in there, that that, that issue will be relieved as well. So th that's just my thoughts on that. Marilyn, did you have a comment? Um, thank the you, seagulls? Mr. Mayor. Um, and, and Boston Inc. is in Stevens Point, and you live in Kaukauna. <coughs> and if the gulls return, and they love to return, the customers will be decorated a lot, and so will their cars. <laughs> Which is why I think it's an advantage to everyone to have the problem oh, resolved. Oh, yeah. Right. 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 Dave, a seagull question? Yeah, I'm just curious. Uh, is the Ashley furniture that's sold in WGNR the same furniture that you'll be selling? And if so, do you have exclusivity on that? So I can't answer that per product, um, but from a high level, Ashley Furniture Manufacture is a different entity than the retailer. So they work closely together so that they're uh, synergistic in that regard. Uh, but Ashley man Manufacture is different than the retail, so there's a chance that those are similar products. Okay, thank you. Item two on the list with the trees. Um, if it takes replacing four dead shrubs to get the approval for this project, it's not going to be an issue at all. 
Um, item three, the window coverings. It sounds like the primary concern of the neighbor there was the light coming through. Um, Ashley is very uh, energy conscious. <laughs> And with their hours of operation, they will be shutting the store down at 10, 10 p.m. on weeknights. Um, after that, the lights will be out, other than the emergency lights that are required. I, I'm guessing that concern came from, because Pick and Save, I believe, operated 24 hours. So if they're closing you know, at 10 o'clock, I would say that's reasonable. Excellent. Um, no delivery trucks, S similar to their store hours, which I think are very um, neighborhood friendly hours, they're not gonna be having off hour deliveries. So anything that's coming in is during normal store business hour. Um, item five, the wooden fence with some issues. Um, it was actually repaired last week. So any structural issues were repaired, boards were replaced. Um, it wasn't painted as the request here, but it was repaired so it's in better condition than it was when this email was written. Um, item six, as far as the dumpsters and dumpster noise, um, we can work with the contractor there on their hours of pickup. Where they're located will be no different than where they were, so they are screened. Um, as far as the hours of pickup, I, you know, I'll do the best I can work through that with their contractor. Um, and same with item number seven, the snow removal. Um, I'm no expert at that, but I imagine there's other places it can go. Yeah. So, large site. Cool. I just, oh, Steve? Any, any uh, comments with rooftop type mechanicals or things of that nature? Yeah, so no changes there at all. Um, okay. If anything, some will be eliminated uh, because as a furniture retailer, they don't require large refrigeration and freezer units. So over time, um, I believe some of them may have already uh, left when pick and save cleared their inventory, um, but there may be others that go over time. So it would be a reduction. Sounds good. Cool. Other comments from you, yeah, Chad? So I just want to say that um, we're happy to see a tenant in that building and that um, it's been a number of years as uh, we've fielded a ton of questions from residents over why isn't there another tenant in there and you know roundies is there paying their fair share of the lease and I understand Ashley is a subtenant to roundies who is a tenant you know <laughs> to the developer so anyway we're happy to see a use come in there and we're happy to see a furniture use come in there because i think there's a definite need in this market for additional opportunities as it relates to furniture so thank you thank you jerry i make a motion to approve subject to staff recommendations including but not limited to staff final approval on the signage package and also the truck unloading and loading times I'll second that, and Motion. thanks for coming to Sheboygan. Motion and second. Just want to echo everyone else's. I, we made a, a, a social media post on about this coming, and there's a lot of good excitement, and I think a lot of folks in the area are excited that this area is going to get a little love, um, and filling an empty building is always a win for the community. So keep up the awesome work. All right, all those in favor, please state aye. 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 Any objection? Chair votes aye. That is approved. Thank you. Next, item nine, Bookworm Gardens time extension request to previous approved condition use permit to construct a new nature school and restroom facility, 1415 Campus Drive. Steve? All right, Elizabeth Whelan is here from Bookworm Gardens, and basically what we're doing is uh, they had come to the plan commission and received approval to construct a new nature school yurt and restroom facility at Bookworm Gardens in September 28th of 2021. Um, the applicant was a little bit concerned in terms of typically a conditional use permit is good for a year and they just wanted to be uh, ahead of the game and have the opportunity to request an extension to that conditional use permit in order to do some additional fundraising so that when they have the ability to do this, they can do both projects, I believe, at one time and not just one or the other. So staff was recommending approval of that extension and has the same conditions of approval and extending that date until September 1st of 2023. Elizabeth, any additional comments? Right. Marilyn? Oh, I make a motion to approve subject to staff recommendations and thank you, Bookworm Gardens. 
I'll second it. Motion second. Any other comments? All those in favor, please state aye. 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 Any objection? Chair sure, votes aye. Item number nine is approved. Next meeting, July 26. We've exhausted the agenda. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor of adjourning, please state aye. 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 We're adjourned at 425. Thanks, everyone. All right. Yeah, thank you.